Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Code Along session for Modular GCP Season 5. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, I know it's been a very long day, but thank you so much for joining and being willing to spend your nights here to learn more about building an IoT analytics pipeline on Google Cloud. I'm Rachel, and I am, and I am the community manager at Google for Singapore, Malaysia, and Philippines, and I will be your host for tonight. And so let's begin by explaining what is Modular GCP. So for those of you who are aware, this is a, a study jam campaign, um, which is an online self-study program that provides developers in Singapore with free access to hands-on Google Cloud Labs while learning alongside a supportive community of peers. So this is a very, um, is a very cost-effective way for you to learn more about the Google Cloud Platform and for you to try your hands on using it for things like AI, ML, data analytics, and BigQuery. And so it's like we have a total of 20 over quests that you can qualify uh, to be able to get skill badges for this program. And so uh, for, for those of you who have not signed up, uh, you may do so at the link we will be sharing with it later. And for tonight, we will be covering a specific quest which is the engineer data in Google Cloud. So what you can do is for all these quests, if you complete certain number of quests, you will get Google branded swag. And yes, did someone say swag? And so for modular GCP, the quests that are qualifying, if you complete at least six quests by 1st of May, uh, you will be able to get the t-shirt, laptop, laptop stand and sticker. And if you want to push yourself even further and complete at least 14 quests, you will get all those with the six quests as well as a sling bag and water bottle. So if you have not already done so, you can you will register at go.gle slash modular GCP. And this is cap sensitive. And also come hang with us at the Google Developer Group Singapore Slack channel at gdgsg.slack.com. And so, um, and so we would also like to welcome uh, Johannes uh, Alexander. So, hi Johannes. Um, so, so he is the customer engineer for data analytics specialist at Google Cloud. Um, so it's like a little bit about him um, is that, sorry, a little bit about him is that he came to Singapore about six months ago and he, and he has been, uh, you know, working with Google for the past six months. Uh, previously, he has worked at Microsoft and Gojek and machine learning product engineer and as a solutions, lead solutions architect in business intelligence. So for him, uh, he's new in Singapore. If you have any suggestions for anything that is fun for him to do, give a shout out in the comments here. Uh, he also loves playing PC games. And uh, he's also a small form factor PC builder. Hi, Johannes, how are you doing tonight? Hi, hi. Thanks, Rachel. I'm good. I'm good. I'm very excited tonight, I guess. That's great. So it's like, um, I hope you're ready for tonight. Um, so it's like, the floor is yours. Cool. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. So yeah, my name is John Alexander. So I'm the data analytics specialist here in Google Cloud based on Singapore. I think probably in the next one and a half, um, one and a half hours, um, we gonna deep dive and then doing the cloud skill boost as well uh, known as quick labs previously and then specifically we will um, deep dive um, and then code along on the building and iot analytics pipeline on google cloud so i think um i'll explain a little bit on the um, on the today's topic right and then also the cloud skill boost uh, features as well on the um, on the on the labs and also the and also the quest right so I think um, um, the way we're going to do it tonight is more into like we're going into the labs, um, try to finish this um, quickly uh, for the interest of time. And then later on, we can um, deep dive and discuss about the products and about the features and things. Um, because on the labs itself, it will we will only have kind of like one hour, 10 minutes. So we need to make it very efficient just to make sure that we cover everything. And then from there, hopefully we can finish it early and then we can have a lot of um, question and answer if needed. 
so yeah i think um let's jump into the um, iot itself so i already started um the lab if you see over here by default if let's say you're starting this lab it will take um, it will give you around one hour and 10 minutes to complete all of the labs hopefully everything is good uh, with all of the demo all of the live station and everything else um, but let me start a little bit right so this lab basically the building an iot analytics pipeline on google cloud is part of the bigger cast right so this is a quest specifically for engineer engineer data in google cloud um which um if let's say some of you um have some plan to get the certification on the professional data engineer um, on the professional data engineer and this lab is um, very recommended um it has a um, couple of labs um the iot analytics pipeline is one of it but i suggest for every one of you to try each of the labs and also complete the quest as well um we will deep dive uh, mostly for today on the um, real-time analytics, which it will be uh, very easy um, for you to replicate and understand as well. And especially you can just always focus on the code rather than infrastructure, right? Uh, with all of the serverless nature in the Google Cloud. Um, there are also another lab that may be really useful for you if let's say you want to deep dive in the data flow itself. Um, this lab is will be really useful as well. The ETL processing on Google Cloud using data flow and BigQuery. Hopefully, um, you can try another lab as well. It and it will be very great. It will be really great if let's say you can complete all of the labs, um, so it can prepare you. Let's say if you want to try the uh, professional data engineer certification. Okay, I guess um, a little bit about the context, right? Before we jump into the labs itself. Um, let me put it into the slideshow. I guess um, the idea of the, um, the analytics, right? Um, it's more into like these three topic usually. So let me bring up my um, lesser pointer. One is to understand what has happened. Um, the second one, what is happening, which is the current state and also what should happen, right? So for this specific topic, we're discussing about the real-time analytics to understand what is happening and also to run the analytics against streaming data. By streaming data means we we um, send the data directly in real-time manner to the, to the analytics platform that we have, which right now we are using BigQuery, where we also can do the descriptive analytics, let's say using the batch um, processing um, and also um, the next step that we can learn is basically related to the um, machine learning and also real-time AI to try to predict, right? It's kind of like the predictive analytics. There are also a specific lab, um, if I'm not mistaken, related to the BigQuery ML, and I suggest you to try that one as well. So just a quick look on the overview, right, in this case. Um, in this case, um, um, in the I mean the Google Cloud itself, uh, we call it the Smart Analytics Platform. It it composed of many um, structure that you can see over here, right? So it basically it covers the collecting process, uh, the processing the data itself, storing, analyze, and everything else. I think um, at the first time it can be um, very complicated if let's say you see this. Um, 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 uh, without any context or whatsoever, but in this case, I'll try to to explain a little bit on the Cloud IoT Core, pops up data flow and BigQuery, which we'll be using along this code along, right? So I think um, it's the best for us to start with the lab directly, and then later on, there are a couple of um, um, deck that I can share, a couple of slides that I can share to you related to the to the product itself so so we can have more uh, question and answer over there so yeah i guess for the interest of time we can start with the um, with the lab itself uh with the lab itself hopefully with one hour we can complete everything um so yeah um let's cut along with this one okay so i think um uh, given i already start the lab um it should give you around one hour and 10 minutes if let's say you're trying on your own and then it will give you some of the overview, right? The overview is mostly like we can like um, creating a scenario in this lab where we have an um, device simulator. We're basically replicating the, the sensor in the real world and then sending the data directly to the cloud uh, uh, via Cloud IoT Core, which basically kind of like the managed service for us to, re to register all of those 
um, 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 the sensor or the edge devices, right? I think in the real life, we can use the, let's say, Raspberry Pi or anything else basically to, to register the sensor and then send the data directly to the cloud. And from there, we can process it directly into the BigQuery so we can do the analysis over there. So the IoT Core is one of uh, is the first component that we will um, um, take care on this one. Uh, basically, kind of like the the um, the managed service for the IoT devices itself, and then we will create another part, which is basically the pop up, kind of like the message broker where we send all of the data over there. We will have a data flow that will become that will act as a streaming service, reading the data from those message broker, processing it, and then push it into the sync. By sync, in this case, is, is a big query data set. So from there, later on, we can um, query the data easily and do the analytics. So I think um, um, we can uh, play through again this one after we complete everything. So for the interest of time, I think we can just do everything first, and then we can get back if needed. OK. So in this case, um, this is the expectation. Um, um, we can connect the um, MQTT-based devices. This one is using simulated device on top of VM. But in the real life, you can replicate with anything else that you have. Let's say using a Raspberry Pi or any sensor that can directly push the data using MQTT, uh, using MQTT protocol, then it can be used as well. Um, it will register um, inside the cloud IoT core, and then IoT core will push the data into the pop-up, and then we can have the data flow to process those data, and then we will um, analyze the data itself using the BigQuery. So in this case, um, hopefully you can understand the end-to-end -end, um, flow if, let's say, you want to try um, real streaming analytics, right? real-time streaming analytics on your own. It will be really easy. Um, in Google Cloud Term, everything is kind of like serverless, so it will very less for you to manage in the infrastructure and then you can uh, focus more into like the code itself and also the the analytics part so uh, this is the uh, the item bigquery pops up data flow iot and everything else and again this is kind of like the advanced level um, advanced level lab so um, there will be a little bit prerequisite if let's say you kind of like a little bit lost on doing everything um, in this lab, but that's fine. You can just follow this one, um, another uh, lab that will be useful as a basic uh, for this lab. Okay, um, this one, the setup and requirement, I basically already done this. Um, when we start the lab, it will, it will give you the username, the password, and the project ID where you can log in. And then basically you can go into this um, specific console, right? So this console is kind of like um, our home for doing um, everything. Um, related to the creating the service and all, so I will uh, back and uh, back and forth with these two tab basically. So this one is pretty straightforward. Um, I've done this previously. Basically, this is the um, the login into the separate user username password um, uh, different with the one that I I use. Let's say in my daily basis. So the idea is if let's say you already have um, another Google Cloud account in your um, in your current computer. Um, just to make just make sure that you are using um, this username and not your um, existing one. Okay, uh, the first step is basically to enable the APIs, right? Um, um, so in big, uh, so in Google Cloud, every services is connected and then act activated. They activated um, based on the APIs. We can connect this API through the console. Through uh, by console means this uh, Google Home console by uh, via the terminal, uh, the CLI, and everything else. Everything via the API. So it's, it's it means if let's say we want to use these services, um, BigQuery pops up, Dataflow, and everything else, we need to enable this one first. So in this case, um, we could go to the API services and then check whether this IoT pops up and Dataflow API is enabled already. So to do this, um, we can um, search over here. API and services. Click here. I close this one. So let me zoom a little bit just to make sure that you can see this clearly, right? So in this case, um, you see this is basically the filter. Uh, this is the API and services that are already enabled. So one thing that we need to make sure is we need to make sure whether the pops up over here is, is already enabled, is already over here. Um, let's see whether we have the others. We have the filter though, um, data flow. See, data flow API is also enabled. And then we need to check for the other one is the, wait, 
Oh, let me zoom out a little bit. Close this one. Um, and then the IoT. The IoT API is also here. So it means um, everything is um, everything here is already enabled. So we're good. But if let's say you are doing on your own and then you found um, some of this um, surface is not enabled, and then basically you can just enable the surface. Um, you can just do this over here, enable APIs and services, and then type the API that you want to, and then that's it, right? The next step, um, this is um, supposed to be an optional one. Um, so if let's say you're dealing with the production, this one should, um, if let's say with the real um, um, environment and things, um, this one um, should be, this step is not really needed most of the time, but given this is kind of like the lab itself and then uh, uh, pre-provision for us. So um, there are a step that in here, which I think based on the uh, based on the history of this lab, maybe there are some problem um, related to this specific API. So um, we need to disable and re-enable this one. So we'll follow this step. The idea is the same. We need to check for the data flow API. Um, click this one. If you see over here, um, the status is already enabled, uh, but we need to re-enable this one. So I will disable this one. Um, and then as per the instruction, and then after this, uh, we can re-enable it again. So there are maybe many reasons of, uh, um, of this specific step. Um, it should be optional though. Um, one of the reasons is maybe during the provision, um, the service account is not created properly. So the service account is kind of like the user generated um, user generated account specifically used for for a machine, um, for for the system itself to access the the services, right? So in Google Cloud, there are um, service account which basically generated uh, for the machine, and also there are um, user account just like my regular account like this. Right. Um, so if we check over here, right now it's enabled, and then we already complete the step. The next one is to create the pop up. Um, uh, we can deep dive later on on what is the pop up and everything else. For the interest of time, we can just follow this one first. Um, but the idea is the pop up is kind of like the message broker, right? Um, if let's say some of you are familiar with the open source like Kafka, is basically a similar thing. Um, in this case, you can imagine it's kind of like a big pipe, and then we can just push um, any data that we want, which is called a publisher, and then we can um, collect those data if we want to, which is called subscriber, right? So um, this is basically um, um, the serverless version of the Kafka itself, if let's say you're familiar with the OSS version. So let me scroll a little bit. Um, in this case, um, the idea is um, we can easily create a new pop up topic. And then from here, we can search uh, for the services and then search for, sorry, um, search for pop up over here and again the interesting point over here is pops up is a serverless service so it means you doesn't need um, you don't need to you don't need to um, uh, managing the infrastructure scaling the infrastructure and everything else you can just set it up uh, one time and then everything will scale um, on their own so um, when the data is huge and then it will scale automatically behind the scene is seamless you doesn't really, you, you don't really need to take care about all of the um, the infrastructure and the scalability part. So it will be really easy for you to focus on the, on what matters to you, right? In this case, on building the, um, the IoT pipeline itself. So in this case, um, we can easily create the topic over here. And then let's follow along. Um, there, are, um, there are topic ID. Topic ID is basically an, um, an identifier in this case. Uh, we just copy over here and then we paste it over here. Um, this one. And then we just leave it everything for, um, default for now, right? And then we can just create the topic. After this, um, in the in the um, um, cloud skill bill itself, it's it's really helpful. We can check whether um, each of the step is um, uh, or whether we already complete um, this um, each of the steps, right? So in this case, um, after we make sure that the topic is completed. Let's give it a little bit. Okay, so if you see over here, the IoT lab is already created and then we can click the check my progress over here. So the check my progress basically will check whether there are an, uh, whether whether there are a topic count 
called IoT lab over there, which is in this specific lab, right? So in this case, everything is good. And then the next one is we need to create a permission. Um, in this case, we basically need to make sure whether we have a principle, which is Cloud IoT System G Service Account. This is a service account. We need to make sure whether this service account is having um, Airbag, the role-based access control, um, as a publisher. So in this case, uh, we can uh, follow along the instruction. Um, we can add the principal over here, um, add the, the service account itself, and then for the um, role itself, we can say it pops up and then act, act as, a, as a publisher. So in this case, it means for every machine that using the service account, it will have the permission to publish the data to this topic, right? So that's basically how it means, uh, what it means. So in this case, um, we just need to save. It will um, update the policy. And then if you see over here, we have the new PubSub Publisher, which is the service account, the client cloud IoT. And in this case, we check again. Uh, we check again with the progress. Everything is good. The next one, uh, we will create the BigQuery data set. So if you can imagine, right, the PubSub will be um, the um, the PubSub will be kind of like the message broker, kind of like the pipe um, where we publish all of the data and the BigQuery will be kind of like the end of it, the sync, the sync part, right? Where we can um, collect all of those data and put it into the um, uh, BigQuery for doing the analytics. Again, with the, uh, the, team, the team in in this case is basically BigQuery is also serverless. So you, you don't really need to um, dealing with the infrastructure, dealing with um, scaling the machine and everything else is not needed. You can just, uh, plug the data over there and then you can just do the query and focus on your, on your analytics rather than doing the infrastructure works. So that's um, that's the case. So in this case, it's also the same. We navigate to the BigQuery. Again, you can um, you can use this um, hamburger button over here and then use the sidebar over here. Or it, for me, um, it will be, it it is easier for me to use the um, the search um, capabilities over here, right? So it it will be faster, at least for me. But but it depends um, on your preference uh, preferences, though. Okay. Um, so in this case, this is a project, and from here we basically need to create a data set, right? Data set itself is um, similar to the database. If let's say you're using um, regular um, 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 RDBMS, let's say, right? So we can create a data set over here, and then click the create data set, and then we name it IoT lab data set. I will copy this one and then create data set, um, put the data set over here. There should be a data location over here that we can set as well. Uh, we can use a multiple region and then, uh, or we can select any data center that um, Google Cloud has. Uh, but in this case, I will just leave it empty and then create the data set. So um, I will just follow the everything that um, that already listed over here. And then from here, the next one is we need to create the, oh, okay. The first one is creating the data set only. Okay. So in this case, um, I'll make sure the data lab, um, IoT lab data set is here. And then if, if I click here, then it will give you some of the details open like this, give you some of the details. Everything is set already. And then I will check my progress as a checkpoint and everything is good. So um, when I click check my progress, basically there will be an assessment to check whether the BigQuery name IoT Lab dataset is already there, right? The next step is we need to create the table out of it. So in this case, uh, we will create a table over here and then I will just follow along the instruction. In this case, create the table and then empty table. I put the table name here is sensor data. And then I will add field, right? Uh, there are timestamp, device, and temperature. So I will put over here timestamp and then device and then temperature, right? So don't forget about the data set. So the timestamp should be a timestamp data set. Uh, sorry, timestamp data type. Um, this one, um, device is string, temperature is float. Um, device is string, temperature is fluid, right? So in this case, um, you can use this kind of um, 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 click uh, mechanism if let's say you want to create the schema, or if let's say you you prefer to do it using using text, it can be done as well. So you can just easily create okay timestamp uh, with the data type 
timestamp the files with the data string and temperature is float. It can be done as well. So it 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 up to you whether you want to use this um, UI click um, or using the um, using the uh, the text to create the schema. So by schema, it means it will create a table with this kind of column. So it, there will be three column times same device and temperature. Sorry. So everything leave um, other defaults unmodified. Okay, so I will not change anything else. And then just create the table over here, right? So I will create the table over here. And again, everything is good. Uh, we'll have a separate table called a sensor data. And then in this case, I will check whether everything is good. Cool. So it said um, empty table is there in the BigQuery data set and everything is good. So this one will be our target table where we um, store all of the data that given by the um, um, device simulator itself. And then um, the device simulator is kind of like the replication of let's say the sensor or the edge devices that we will use in the real life, right? And then everything will be stored over here. Okay, all good. The next one is to create a storage bucket, right? Um, so storage bucket is is often called a blob storage, so binary large object storage. So you can imagine this is kind of like your external hard drive, right, um, in the cloud. So you can just give, uh, you can just push all of the data um, as many as you want, um, and and the pay is um, is basically on how many storage that you use over there. So this cloud storage bucket. Um, 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 we need to create one. So in this case, it's also the same. We need to, to jump into another product called cloud storage, right? And then we have the cloud storage over here. And then we ask to create a bucket with the project ID and then add the bucket, right? Add this bucket. So I will copy the project ID over here. And then I will create a bucket. And then I'll close this one. Let's see. Let's redo it. OK. So I put the project ID over here and add bucket, right, as per the instruction over here. Uh, for location type, click multi-region, uh, multi um, this one. So this one is multi-region, so this one should be good. Um, and then uh, for locations, uh, choose the closest to you. I will just leave it as it is. Um, and then just click create. So in this case, it basically will create the, um, um, the bucket for storing all of the data, right? So in this case, you can store uh, unstructured data. Unstructured data means um, like the video, audio, photos, images. You can just put it over there. You can. Um, push the semi structured as well, JSON, CSVs, or you can just also put the uh, a columnar format, let's say, um, maybe parquet file, or let's say the row level format, kind of like the Afro, it can be done as well. ORC, it's also possible. Basically, you can just push everything over here. So in this case, we also need to check whether everything is good. Um, OK, then it will um, acknowledge that I already created, uh, already created the cloud storage bucket, right? So this one, basically, we already set up um, several things. We already set the pub sub topic um, for pushing the data, BigQuery as the end of it, the cloud storage bucket as um, a as, um, um, universal store to store the data. Um, either it kind of like the bucket, uh, either a temporary logging or anything else we just put over there. So basically, um, we uh, let's say for the data flow, we need to have the cloud storage bucket to store the temporary data, right? So in this case, but um, in many use cases, you can just use it for anything else the next one we will create a setup uh, um, a data flow pipeline so i will explain later on what is the data flow and what is um, uh, what is it used for and everything else but for now let's follow along the um, the instruction over here um, again basically we change um, into a separate product so maybe for some of you that kind of like new into this one it's kind of like complicated because you need to understand on your in, in uh, on the back of your head, right? That basically, okay, this is kind of like the steps that we want to build, and um, the architecture is something like this, and then we need to understand what product that we want to use. So I will recap everything um, um, later on, right? So in this case, um, um, on the data flow, there are some template that we can use, right? Uh, so data flow basically can do anything. Let's say copy from uh, from one source to another one. Uh, by default, we need to use the Apache Beam as the 
as the framework. Um, there will be a part of code that we needed to, but from the Google side, it already creates some of the template that you can use easily. So in this case, we will use that one and then uh, we, we will follow along, create job from template and then the job name is IoT app flow. We put it over here. For the regional and POIN, um, it said uh, we need to choose the US central one. Over here is the same. And then we select the pub sub topic to be query for the data flow template. For now, we can just follow along and then later on I will show you what is the uh, what does this mean? And then we, you can also check the code directly in the in the repository as well. Uh, this one, pop up topic to BigQuery, I will explain later on. So the idea is this template will create this um, 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 prepackaged code, and then we can just need, uh, we can just easily um, input the required parameters rather than doing the code from the start, right? But um, the option is there as well, if let's say you want to do the code on your own, but in this case, we can just use the existing one. Um, there are multiple templates that are available here. Um, let's say copying the data from uh, for the data masking and different product pops up to MongoDB, pops up to pops up, pops up to any other sources. So basically we can do a lot of things. But for this one, we will continue with this and then we will follow along uh, for the pop up topic. We will use the project ID then this one. So we will copy this. So this is basically the structure of the URI, right? So, so the projects will be the um, the uh, the fixed parameter for this project ID. We will replace it with the one that we have over here, and then we replace it with uh, with um, our current. And then the topics is basically the topic that we that we will use. The IoT is this is the name of the topic that we add previously that we create previously in the in this this step, right? And then for the BigQuery table is also the same. If you remember, we also already create the BigQuery table previously. Then we can just copy over here. Um, BigQuery output table, but again, uh, the idea is the same. Uh, we just um, replace the project ID with the one that we use. So in this case, I will block this and then replace this. And then the temporary location, um, we can just use this URI. I will explain later on um, uh, what is this URI for. This is basically the um, the path for uh, for us to use the the bucket itself. So if I, if you remember previously, I said that this bucket is for um, storing any data that needed. So in this case, um, it will be used by Dataflow to store the temporary data. So the idea is the same. I will use the temporary location over here. Um, so in this case um, there are some optional parameter that we need to check um, there are max worker and also machine type i will explain this one a little bit um, data flow in the in the first version like this the, like the one that we use is based on the machine type but there are features for auto scaling but the new one which is called the data flow prime um, um, there are an there are a serverless function right so it means in this case we doesn't really need to make sure that Hey, um, uh, what is the max worker that we need to set? What is the VM type that we need to set? Those one will will be not existent anymore. But right now it's still in the preview uh, version. So yeah. So for now uh, we will use the the auto scaling version one. Oop, wait for some reason. Oh wait, the number of worker. Oh, I should put sorry in this machine type. So what we put is here max worker is two, this one, and then the machine type is N1 standard one. I will explain later on as well what is the N1 standard one. So this is the, the parameter that we need to fill. Um, I guess that's it. Um, we should click the run job, but let's check one more time um, just to make sure that uh, we are using a correct project ID then we can search over here and make sure okay we already changed all of the project correctly and then for the bucket itself we're already using the slash bucket okay uh, we have the correct uh, this is the data set and this is the the table name um, this is the topic name so i think we're good um, hopefully everything is okay so yeah just click run the job so when we click this basically it will spin up the infrastructure for you um, for now, by default, it will create um, the VM with N1 standard one. So it means um, N1 a VM type with single core. And then um, it can auto scale, horizontal auto scale into two maximum workers. So this is the one that we fill in 
previously in this one. So it means um, this is will be the original VM. And then if let's say the the data that we push is is a lot, then it it will be able to auto scale with up with maximum two workers. So it can be maximum two uh, VM with the spec and one standard one. So again check the progress and everything else so everything is good um, this one it will need it will take some time basically to um, to prep the the infrastructure um, running the system and everything else but if you see over here the the job status is running so it's basically ready for us to pump the data over here and then it will write the data into the bigquery cool um um again feel free to comment and also um, if let's say there are some question right um then then we can discuss it um later on in this case um we will continue a little bit um given we have only 35 minutes i think should be good enough the next one um when we spin up um this lab basically we will all we will um have this vm already uh, pre-provisioned for us so the next step that we need to check is we check for virtual machine so in the in the cloud ecosystem, it called um, infrastructure as a service. So VM is kind of like the very basic um, um, services that uh, that provided by by Google for you. Is if let's say we are talking about VM, you can just imagine this one is a um, um, a computer that spin up on the cloud for you, right? So the next step is um, sorry, click the SSH, open in a browser window. So this one and then open in a browser window it will um, connect um, this one is basically will create the um, ssh for us right so so it will uh, creating the ssh connection and everything else so in matter of second we we already inside of the vm and then we can do everything right um, so i'll switch the tab a little bit and then from here is basically about the the typing a little bit right if let's say you do it on your own i will suggest for you not to copy paste like i am but just to do the typing and everything else but uh, for for the interest of time for now i just copy over here, over here right so this um this comment is basically to install the pip3 um, um and then um sorry um installing the virtual env using the python package and then it will create the virtual env um, the new virtual environment uh, based on uh, python 3 called v vnv venv and then we activate the, the the virtual env itself right so in this case i will paste it over here it will install the, it will install the virtual env and then it will create the new one vnv and then uh, we just activated um, so in this case if you see over here right now we already changed the environment right using the virtual environment so in this case um, we need to do the authentication so in this case we can just copy and then paste over here the cloud out login is basically to to connect the g cloud sdk that we have over here with the account that we have so uh, prior to this um, this vm is not connected directly to the account um uh, that we use so so it don't have um it doesn't have any access to the to the let's say to the to the pub sub to the bigquery and everything else so in this case we need to authorize it um do you want to continue yes and then we just click this link um and then i click this one um we allow it and then copy this one basically um this will give you the access um, so the VM can access everything inside the project, right? So we can get back to this one if, let's say, you have some of the question. No worries. Um, we are already doing this, and then the next one is we need to go. Uh, we need to do the update, right? So I will copy this and then um, update the repository. After updating the repository, we need to install a um, couple of components um, like the Python pip again, open uh, open SSL, and also Git. Um, we are also we need also to after after we install pip we also need to um, add additional python package like like the um, um, G, uh, jwt and also mqtt and also the cryptography um, i will copy this one as well to put it over here so this one will install the needed package over here i'll zoom a little bit um if let's say oh wait uh, how to do the zoom okay so this one may be better 
hopefully let's make it 150 then oh it's a little bit cut 125 should be fine um the next one um previously we already installed the um, uh, git open ssl and everything else and then we need to install this one the python package and then we need to clone the repository so this one will be um, the code that we use um, i'll touch this one a little bit after this um, and we can see what is the code and everything else okay everything is good and then the next one we need to um, clone the repository So the repository itself is very huge. So it's over 300, 400 megabytes. So so um, be careful if let's say you're um, um, you're cloning the repository into your local, right? And make sure whether you have enough bandwidth and also enough storage as well. Um, so waiting a little bit i believe everything is good and then we just clear this a little bit to make it clean and then we make sure we already um, 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 executed everything execute everything so um, this history comment basically just to recap what is the comment that we already execute just to make sure that we're not missing anything right uh, so in this case if you remember uh, we already create a new environment um, so this one we already uh, doing the update over here and then doing the install pip and then doing the Python package installation, install pip, um, pack, uh, Python package installation, and then um, doing the this one, and then cloning the repository. Cool. So I guess we're good. The next one is we need to create um, a registry for the IoT device. So we're going to do this um, using the terminal. So in this case, um, I will copy this, put it into the URL over here, if you if you can see. And I will put it over here. Then I will copy the project ID over here. I will put it as well over here. Then um, I cut this one and then put it over here. So it means um, if let's say we are um, we are using the project ID variables right over here. So it will give you the same um, this one. So it basically kind of like a variable um, naming as well for this. So the next one, um, we also need to set the region. So I will do the same, copy over here, and then use US Central one because this is the one that we use. Sorry. And then cut this one. And then um, I close this and then paste this one. It's also the same. So it means if we trying to call this variable, then it will give you the US Central one, right? Um, that's it so if you see over here basically this variable will be used right so in this case we can have a more um, clean common line right so we do, um, we can also use this multiple times in the same session so in this case i will also do the same just copy this one and then paste it over here so this one basically it will create the um, IoT um, cloud IoT core with the name IoT Lab Registry. Um, so if you remember previously, we always do everything using the GUI. So this is the other one, uh, the other way to do it using the CLI. So this is basically the same. If I go to the IoT core over here, it will basically show that um, we already create the IoT Lab Registry right so we can create the registry using gui like this or if let's say you prefer using the cli and everything else it can be done as well so we basically need to use the g cloud um, sdk over here the g cloud command and then it will have a lot of things let's say for the iot for the pub sub for the bigquery for the google cloud storage um, everything is there okay so just to make sure that everything is good um we check the progress again everything is good um this one is specifically to create the cryptographic key pair right so this one is more into like the way we can um, um authenticate between the iot device that we will use and also the the iot core itself um i will not really deep dive in this one i will copy on this one and then um, um and paste it over here it will basically creating the, the um, private and public um, um, key 
key right for for uh, for this one to be used in the uh, simulator itself and also the one that will be used in the um, iot lab so it can also authenticate each other and then uh, connect it in secure way um, and then the one thing that we need is to we need to create the temperatures. Uh, we need to create the devices itself. Um, in the real world, this one can be like a real edge devices with the sensor, with the compute like the Raspberry Pi and everything else. So it will be the same. Basically, if let's say you have um, any edge devices, you need to register those edge devices into the IoT so it can communicate and each other and also accepting the message. But this one, since we are since we are using the what is it? Since we are using the emulator, right? So in this case, we will um, replicate, simulate that basically we have a temperature sensor in Buenos, uh, Buenos Aires and also the Istanbul. Um, so we can just copy this one and then we paste it over here. Um, if you see over here, right, um, we already have the private key over here and then we push the, um, the public key as well. Right, so the private key will be used on the uh, on the edge devices like this, like the simulator, and then the um, and the public key will be pushed um, into the IoT side, so it can um, um, connect to each other. I may be not the right person to explain you in details related to this cryptographic key uh, key pair, uh, but I guess you can always check on the on the on the Google, basically googling it out, right, just to check where um, how it works and everything else. So I believe I already create the Buenos Aires one, and then we will create um, the second one, which is the, the um, what is it? I forget the Istanbul one. And then we can always check um, um, clear story. We can always check whether uh, we already do the correct one or not, right? So we have the uh, Buenos Aires one and also the Istanbul. And if you see over here, it's basically the same. Right. Um, so inside the registry, basically the command itself, it's saying that, hey, I want to create um, um, a device called temperature sensor Istanbul in the IoT services. Right. I give you the project ID. I give you the region. I give you the registry itself, which is the IoT lab. And then this is the public key. Right. So if you see over here, it's basically the same. Um, we will have the devices over here. So this is basically the same. You can always create the um, devices uh, via, uh, via the GUI if you want to. But if it's not, then you can just, hey, uh, just using the CLI and everything is good, right? Again, check for everything. Um, I think everything is good. And then we just need to run the simulated device um, just to make sure, uh, because previously I've, I tried this on my own, on my um, uh, previously, just to make sure that uh, we don't have any error on the data flow itself. Um, let's see. Cool. So it seems um, the data flow job is running. Uh, the data flow is kind of like the important thing over here because this is basically the 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 ETL tooling that we use, right? So it basically will ingest the data. Sorry, uh, collect the data from the pop up and then ingesting the data into the what is it into the bigquery right so we, we just need to make sure that everything is correct previously i have um some error because i put the wrong parameter right so if let's say you found some issue uh, doing uh, when doing this on your own just to make just make sure that you have the correct parameter and everything else right um okay so all good and then the next one basically we need to run um the the device itself right the simulation so in this case i will clear the cli i will paste it over here um this one is basically to create if you see over here it will create um another key called roots right um where this key will be used for the code itself um um, the code itself is basically already over here um you can check on your own if let's say we want to check it now and then MQTT example JSON like this. We can check the code and everything else, but I think right now it's a little bit tricky uh, if we check it using the terminal. Later on, we can just show you. I can just show you in the in the Git itself, and we can check a little bit um, what this code does, right? But for now, we just follow along. Um, in this case, if you see, it will basically um, throwing the MQTT. Uh, it will run the MQTT um, Python code. It will give you the parameter project ID cloud region. Uh, we need to supply it with the project ID and, my, um, and also the region itself. And then we specify the um, registry. Sorry. Um, we select which device that we want to push the data to. 
right? Because it's kind of like the simulation, basically. Hey, um, this is the project ID, um, uh, my region. This is the, the the IoT lab target. This is the device target. This is the private key that you want, that uh, that you need for the authentication. I'll give you the message type and also the algorithm and everything else. Um, if you see over here, we have the um, the standard error um, push into into the into the backend and also we run in the background, right? So it means it will throw any output for this specific command, right? So I will put this over here and then just execute and then it will run in the background. But for the other one, um, we can see what it's basically um, this uh, Python script does, right? So it will run, it will sending the event, then then you can check uh, what is it. Um, let me paste it over here because if you see there are no standard, um, there are no output redirection. So in this case, if we execute this, you can see whether, hey, um, um, this is the GWT uh, private key and everything else, then it will publishing this kind of message. Uh, it will publish 100 message with the uh, timestamp, device, and also the temperature, which I think you um, by now you probably are pretty familiar that this is the this is the item or also the column that we already set in the BigQuery site. So the expectation of this is while we having this two uh, Python job running all together, one is the Istanbul one and one is the Buenos Aires pushing this 100 message, right, to the BigQuery directly. And then um, pushing it to the Cloud IoT Core, Cloud IoT Core will pipeline it into the PubSub and then from the PubSub it will pipeline it, uh, it will, uh, it will um, data flow will pick those data from the PubSub and then uh, it will write the data into the BigQuery. So hopefully by now, um, everything should be there in the BigQuery, let's see. So in this case, if you see um, it's pushing the data right now, it's still pushing the data. And in this case, um, so far we don't see any error or whatsoever. And then we can go to the BigQuery over here um hopefully if let's say we paste the code um a little bit formatting and then we can query the data yeah so that's basically it though if you see over here um we can um we can do the count so oh, uh, maybe device count one as total event um, from the sun, sun, and then um, group by one. Uh, by one meaning the the first column um, as total events. Uh, format a little bit just to make sure that you know it's pretty clean and things. Um, block this one and see. So if you see, we have already all 200 events. If you if you remember that we have this one pushing 100 event, this one is pushing 100 event, right? And everything is done now. So just to make sure that we have the real-time analytics pipeline, right? Then we can just rerun everything again. So we will push another 100 uh, message to the Istanbul, um, sorry, Istanbul sensor. Then if you can see over here, if we run this, the number should increase as well. So right now it's 109, and then if you do the query again and again, then basically the number will keep increasing until we push another 100 message, right? So, ah, okay. So sorry, Rachel, I just saw your message. I will increase this one. So sorry for that. So sorry, everyone, if let's say you cannot see this one previously, I will explain a little bit. Um, the idea is in this case, we have the following query that we can run just to make sure that everything is uh, is in already and as you can see um the number keep increasing in real time right so in this case um it means um we right now already have uh we have done um um such an amazing job i would say to create um to simulating a device let's say kind of like the edge devices and then you can understand that hey you can just push the data directly to the cloud and then we have the IoT core that manage all of the interconnection between the um, edge devices into, into the cloud itself. And then um, cloud IoT core will take care of all of the data and everything else with the authentication to edge devices, authorization and things. And then push the data that's sent by the edge devices to the PubSub. And 
pops up, basically we'll make it available as an asynchronous message broker, right? And from there, we have the data flow job where um, it will get the data from the pops up itself, processing it a little bit, and then pushing it to the BigQuery. The idea of this, if um, if you, um, um, hopefully you understand the end-to-end -end flow, that we don't really um, take much time on the infrastructure itself, right? I believe previously, um, if I if I remember, maybe um, three to five years ago, if let's say we we want to build such thing, then we need to have a lot. Uh, we have a lot of things to set up, right? Let's say you need to create the VM, you need to have um, databases, you need to install some of the databases um, um, you, as as per your preferences. Um, you need to have the message broker if you want to. Then you need to create, let's say, having a Kafka and then having the infrastructure all set together and everything else. But right now, um, given we have the serverless capability over here, then it will be really easy for you to set up everything, right? Um, if you see, we only need probably around 30 minutes to one hour to set up everything. Uh, what you need to understand is all of the tooling is everything is there. So... So if you check over here, um, just to recap, basically we are using the compute engine as the VM for the simulation. We are also using BigQuery to storing the data. Um, there are no need to pre-provision and everything else. We, you can just dump the data and and ready to use, right? And the other thing we also have um, a cloud storage. This one is basically the blob, the uh, binary large object storage to store all of the type of data. In this case, we are using it for the temporary storage for the data flow itself. Um, we have the data flow, let's see, on the, um, this one. We have pops up as a message broker. This one is serverless as well. We don't need to maintain about the infrastructure and things. You can just push the data as many as you want. Um, just a little bit information. Basically, this pops up is only is also used internally inside Google for managing all of the Gmail, chat, and everything else, right? So you can imagine the scale that we serve inside the Google itself. Pops up and data flow for doing the ETL processing. Right now, you see that um, there are a um, um, little bit. Um, um, it's not really serverless at the moment with the current uh, version. It needs to. We need to specify the VM um, VM size and also we need to specify the max worker and everything else. But the new one is called Data Flow Prime, which I will show a little bit like, uh, later on. It will give you all of the access for the serverless function. So, so it will uh, scale vertically and then it will scale horizontally as well. While the current version can only scale in in horizontal manner. So it means there are a couple of use cases where basically you can have an error, let's say, for the out of memory, right, for the OOM. Cool. Um, so I guess everything is good. Um, so this is the idea. Um, in this case, if let's say you are um. Um, data analyst, right? You can just directly do the query if, let's say, you want to use, um, if you see over here, you can explore the data in many ways. You can use Google Sheet if you want. You can use Data Studio if you want. Or if, let's say, you familiar with the Jupyter Notebook and things, you can use um, Google Colab. You can use um, Vertex AI or many tools, right? Um, basically, you can just utilize the data because it's already there in real-time manner. Cool. Um, so this is the end of it. I think um, it turns out one hour should be good enough. Um, I will. So I think probably we can discuss around ten minutes, I believe, um, just to share a little bit about the product and things, and then we can go to the QA Q and A. So in this case, I will leave it open. I will not answer this. I think it will be really interesting if you finish this one, and then you can just fill in fill this out, right? So I will not do this, and then I will just end the lab over here. Okay, um, everything is good. You can just um, uh, give the rating as well. I already done this before. So yeah, I think before Q&A, I will um, touch this one a little bit, right? Um, hopefully, um, this lab and everything else is really useful for you, right? And at least you can understand about um, uh, a little bit out of this smart analytics platform with the huge product and everything else, right? Of course, each of the activity may, uh, may have... Um, a preferred um, stack to be used. So in this case, if let's say we are dealing with the real-time analytics, um, usually we have the pops up and then the IoT core, if let's say we have um, the edge devices, data flow for the streaming and batch processes, and then we have the BigQuery. I will touch very quickly into this, um, into this next five slides, probably for the next five minutes. The first one, this is the IoT core, just to give you some of the details, right? Uh, the idea of the IoT core is um, to give you um, um, a managed service to 
to control and also to connect to manage the device, right? So in this case, device can be anything. Usually, it's uh, called an edge devices. By edge devices, it can be kind of like the Raspberry Pi. It can be your your phone. You can it can be any smart devices, IoT devices that you have, right? The idea is um, is is scalable. There are no infrastructure or whatsoever need to manage. You can just push the data over there. Oh, um, leave the site let me get back to here um it will scalable easily and also it will inter um, uh, it have a very good interoperability with the opc ua opc ua is the open um, platform connection um unified uh, unified something i forget what is the um, um, um about this one but the, this one is basically the 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 open source um um uh, the protocol, the accepted protocol that we can use um, uh, for the IoT, right? So it will give you the good interoperability between the devices that you use uh, when you connect it into the IoT core. The next one, the theme is still the same. Um, the idea of this is you can have um, um, publish subscribe uh, message broker, right? Um, compared to others, again, the serverless will become the, the theme over here. The idea is you, do, you don't really need to um, you don't really need to uh, manage the infrastructure, scale the infrastructure and everything else. You can just push the data as many as you like, right? So it's basically scalable. Um, there are a couple of um, function over here, the auto-scaling, auto-provisioning, which basically seamless from the user point of view. Just like you see previously, we can just push the data over there and that's it, right? Um, um, this one should be really easy to use as well. The next one is data flow. Uh, the data flow is um, is basically the ETL tools, right? Uh, but but it having the capabilities to process either batch and also the streaming data. So in this case, um, it also uh, very simple. The 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 new one is called the data flow prime. Sorry, this one. If you see over here, the data flow prime is the the newer version right now is still um, is still in public preview if you see over here but you can read this later on the idea is giving the um, the full capability of the serverless um, right now um, it has it has the capability to do the auto scaling the horizontal auto scaling but not really serverless because you need to manage the vm type and everything else if you remember we uh, we use the n1 standard one Right, so if you curious what is the N1 standard one, then you can just do the googling, right? N1 standard one, then it will give you the machine families over here. Then you can always search over here N1 standard. Oh wait, 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 wait. Is is it still there? This one, right? So so there are the N1 uh, machine machine type family, then everything else, right? So you can go here the general purpose one. And then see, let's see, this one, N1 standard, this one N2, E2, this one. N1 is kind of like the old one. N1 standard one, it means one vCPU, uh, 3.75 uh, gigabyte of memory, and et cetera, et cetera. So you can easily just do the Googling just want, if, if let's say you want to understand more details on it. Okay, and the last one, of course, is the BigQuery. I believe uh, many of the Kaggle user, many of the um, 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 Google Cloud customer is really like this BigQuery, basically because it's it's really fast. It's really we as from the data analytics perspective, basically you can just throw the query and focus on your analytics rather than doing all of the maintenance and everything else. Of course, at the certain level, you will need to have the uh, the uh, schema design, performance optimization, and things. But from the get go, you does you don't need to um, take uh, you don't need to take care about the scaling, the type of machine, and everything else. You can just throw any query that you want to over there, and it works really well. Okay, um, the last slide is on the the persona, right? Just to give you a little bit on the on the use cases um, um, as a smart analytics platform goes. Um, we try to replicate this kind of persona, right? Uh, we have the developer, data engineer, data analyst, business user, data scientist, and security admin. So in this case, um, we're mostly doing in this part, the data engineering part, of course, because the lab and the quest itself is part of the data engineering certification. So it, we are dealing with the messaging system, the data processing, with data processing, we are using data flow. We have the data itself. Um, there are another lab that, 
that uh, touching a little bit on the cloud composer if i'm not mistaken then you can check um, but if let's say you are um, not a data engineer if let's say you are data analyst this is kind of like the tools that you usually use if let's say you are business user this is kind of like the tools that you usually use so this one is kind of like the um, the references usually for uh, for the for the team let's say for the engineering team to build the data platform and try to understand hey if let's say the, our user is data scientist then what is the tool that they usually use in the google cloud platform right so hopefully this one can help you to understand more um that's it though um hopefully this card along session is really uh, is really useful for you hopefully uh, because you already spend um some of your time uh, during the night to learn and everything else so yeah i think i think we can uh, go to the question or uh, anyone sorry if any then i will give back to probably um rachel or tuya if there thank you Thank you so much, Johannes. We really enjoyed this code along session. I learned a lot about, about building a data pipeline. And for me, is that I've learned to code in Python before. So this was really interesting to see. And also, I'd like to introduce my co-host for tonight, uh, Thuya. Hi, Thuya. Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. Thuya. Hi, Johannes. Uh, uh, yep, Thuya, maybe you want to give a quick intro about yourself? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm... Currently, a senior specialist MasterCard. I, I use uh, a lot of GCP back in my machine learning engineers days, and like like Johannes talk about like big query ML and all these things are really interesting and highly scalable. So I'm really excited for that. Hey, yeah, cool! And also I'd like to give um, a quick shout out to the Google Developer Student uh, Club members from the Singapore chapters here. Hi guys, hope you, all of you have enjoyed this cool long session and I hope you're all having fun learning about this. And yeah, it's like, um, maybe Tuya, do you have any any questions that you know uh, with regards to this cool long session? Uh, I think Johannes, like you, you talk about having Raspberry Pi and all these things as a uh, input, but even though this is IoT, right? It might not just limit to that IoT aspect, right? Data engineering can be, a lot of sources, it may be uh, messaging apps uh, that's coming in messages and all these sort of things. So it was really quite interesting to see from IoT aspect because usually uh, when I work with data, it's not so much on the IoT side, it's more from the customer side, but IoT side is sort of similar. This is quite uh, interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, that's correct too. Yeah, I think um, um, I believe I helped some of the companies as well let's say uh, utilizing the iot right uh, the edge devices if let's say they um, um in the plantation industry let's say or uh, let's say in the right hiring industry many industries usually use them the edge devices to send the data using the sensors and everything else and then pushing a lot of data right a lot of updates from the device itself so in this case um the iot core is kind of like the 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 product that we need to doing the integration and things but as you said previously right um the rest of it is basically the same. Um, you will be familiar with the PubSub, you will be familiar with the data flow and the BigQuery. And of course, other than the IoT, usually the PubSub is still there, basically kind of like for the message broker and things. But if let's say you have another type of application, right? In this case, um, if I turn on my laser pointer, it can be anything else. Um, it can be from the e-commerce backend data, from the SaaS application, from the social media, for, uh, for the geospatial data. Everything else can just be pushed to the pop shop. If I say uh, we have kind of like the event, um, um, kind of like we want to build the complex event processing, we want to put, we want just to push the event from many backend services into the Google Cloud easily, then we can just use the pop shop for any type of things if you want to. Interesting. So, uh, Johannes, there is a question from Daniel. So, the question is why is it important to build an IoT analytic pipeline? I see. Um, Thanks for the question, Daniel. I think I think this is the, a really good one. So um, 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 maybe previously Rachel uh, Rachel touched this a little bit, right? Um, if let's say um, 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 uh, during my experience, let's say in my previous company, um, if let's say you have a lot of IoT pipelines, right? Uh, maybe um, uh, devices or sensors that you have, right? Um, let's say in the office or let's say in the in the in the in the field, right? Um, Previously, it's really hard to handle the scalability aspect. So if, let's say, um, you have thousands of devices, let's say, right? And then you want to do the 
um, the analysis out of it. Usually, um, the way to do it is that, that uh, we need um, a landing server, right, to collect all of this kind of data. So let's say if you have a thousand servers and then you send the data um, every second, right? So it will be a lot of data that collected into this landing server. And then this landing server, we need to, um, let's say if we have kind of like one to 10 million every hour, let's say. And then from here, we need to ingest it into the database, right? Um, for us to store the data and everything else. And then from this database, we can only start um, querying the data and things. But if you see the, the complexity of doing this, right? If let's say you are uh, you are not uh, utilizing the cloud features on this case, in this case, of course it can it can be done. So let's say if you have a VM in the cloud, you need to spec up the uh, the infrastructure and things uh, to to collect all of those uh, real time data every every second from each of the devices, right? And then you need to have a um, um, scalable ETL processes to do the aggregation and things, and also not to make sure, uh, not to mention that we need also to have a scalable data warehouse as well to do the query, the analytical query and things, right? So in this case, um, 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 this IoT pipeline is basically giving you the capability to focus more on the analytic side rather than dealing with the infrastructure side, right? So I think if let's say you want to do this on your own, of course, of course you can, but you need to scale about the landing server. You need to scale the database itself to handle the data. You need to scale up the, um, the ETL processes, uh, ETL processor, uh, ETL processor application if you want to, and then you need to scale the, the uh, landing database, let's say the data warehouse, right? But in this case, as you see, if, um, if let's say you have the capability of the cloud, you can easily just use, hey, um, I want to have a scalable pipeline, then I can just use the pub sub. Um, hey, I want to a scalable um, ETL machine, then I can just use data flow. And then for the analysis, we can just use the BigQuery. So in this case, it basically scale really well. And then you can just only focus on your code, on your data analytics rather than dealing with the infrastructure. So that's basically the idea of this IoT analytics pipeline. Though. Thank you, Ernest. And if I may add my own personal experience, it's like if mm. for the IoT system, it's not just about collecting data for the things that they are measuring. You also have to do calibration for the IoT devices, say Correct. sensor, right? It, it might degrade over time. And if you don't have pipeline to monitor this kind of variation over time, you probably won't know when to replace your equipment, right? For customers, customers, they just create content or data, right? But for IoT devices, you got to monitor their health as well. It's not just the data that they're monitoring. Correct, correct, correct. Thanks for the addition to you. I, I think, I think, I think um, your uh, your point is really great, right? I think um, for those use cases, and I believe because you are um, you are a machine learning engineer yourself, I think you can imagine the next step is not to stop in the analyze part, right? So you still need to focus on the on the training on the machine learning stuff, which will require more and more. Um, computing power basically to 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 solve your problem, right? So in this case, I think ha um, having the your concentration in the infrastructure is not the best way to do things. If let's say you can just leverage the capability in the cloud, and then you can just you know um, focus on your um, focus on your things like like the analytics and the machine learning and things rather than infrastructure, and just give those infrastructure part into the into the Google side, then it will be really easy for you to scale. That's, that's great, Johannes. Thanks for answering. So I also have another question from Gerard. Is there a lab for IoT fleet management for Google? I see. Um, this one, I'm not really sure. I don't think I have the, um, I have the answer right now. Um, maybe um, we can check it offline. Maybe we can work with Tuya and also Rachel later on, and then we can update in the Slack channel, right? Um, um, for the fleet management, I think there are also a couple of product re related product as well. Um, usually used for the delivery, for the routing um, experience as well. Um, but for the specific IoT, I'm not really sure though. Um, so so yeah, I think I think sorry for this, I cannot answer this right now. Uh, I don't have um, 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 enough information for this. But I think uh, we can follow up on uh, offline in the in the Slack channel if you want to. Sorry, Jared. Uh, we will update you on the Slack channel. I hope you, you get an answer from there. So uh, there isn't much question from the audiences. If you have questions, just type it down. Uh, we will give like one or two minutes for them to come up. If not, then uh, yeah, if you have any feedbacks for the sessions, if you really like Johannes' 
uh, session about this IoT, you want to bring him back for the next round, feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube channel and also in the Slack channel, right? Yeah. Of course. So once again, thank you everyone to tuning in. Uh, I hope you know you learn something or you finish your quest by the time we finish this call along sessions. And also, we really thanks your time for being here, and I hope you support us in the in the next futures event as well. Cool. So, yep. So uh, just a just a bit of reminder: this uh, modular six GCP things is ending in like a week. So if you haven't done yet, or you sort of like pushing away for for the things to finish, uh, now is the time to finish because. We're gonna have this uh, quest completion rewards, right? If you want the swag, you have to finish everything. So if you finish six quests, you will get this, and 14 quests, you have some other things. Uh, so yeah, if, if you want to register, you can register through here. You can still make it through uh, the, the, the quest if you try really hard, like the whole day working on it. Uh, if you want to ask some question, there's a community hangout from here. Uh, ggsgslack.com. Uh, we are we are always there to you know support you with your quest journey. All right. Uh, so this is the the slides about you know how do you redream your your swag. So for modular GCP, we only deliver to Singapore addresses. So if you're not from Singapore, come to Singapore. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry if you are staying overseas, we can't deliver to the overseas addresses. Right, you can scan the QR code to take a look at it, or you can just uh, Google it from the YouTube. Cool. Okay, next slide. Right, yo, so thanks again for joining. If you haven't, you know, uh, like our Facebook or join our Facebook group, please feel free to do so because we're gonna post a lot of update in the future. And uh, if you like Slack, rather instead of Facebook, join our Slack channel. There's a lot of people helping out with the quests and uh, answering questions. So yeah, thanks, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, we will close it for now. Hopefully, we see each other again in the future. And uh, cool. thank you, Jonas, for your time and giving us the the run through the call long session. And thank you, Rachel, and for co-hosting this session with me. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks, Rachel, thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.